Today I want to start on tet meshing and working with tetrahedrons. So I'm, I want to do several videos of it so I can go over a whole bunch of things. So what I created here was some geometry. It's available down below. I'm just going to import this geometry of a tetrahedron just so we can just make sure we understand this, the shape of it. So you can Google it and learn lots about all the geometries of a tetrahedron, but this is the general shape that we're going to use and that we try to create in our meshing. So here's just a 3D block and while we're at it, let's do tetra meshing on this tetrahedron. Okay, so before I mesh it, what I want to do in general, let's check the size of it. So I can go under here in geometry and length and I can pick one of the lines here and click the length and it comes in as 10. So let's pick this side here. I think that's clear there. So I pick this side and it's 10. So each of the sides on here on a regular tetrahedron are the same. In this case, it's 10. So when I mesh it, I want it to put probably half a millimeter. So there's about 20 units going across here. Now to do a tetra mesh, Go under the 3D panel, hit Tetra Mesh, and we have a few options. One is we can use Tetra Mesh, and in this case, it works with uh, trias or other triangles that are already created on the surface. Or we can go down here, which I use most often is Volume Tetra, and here we either pick a solid or we can pick the surfaces that enclose, enclose it. We have both in this case. Now, also down here, we have the element order. We can pick first or second order, and we're just going to talk about those just briefly. Altair has a book out that's available, and I'll have a link down below where you can download it as well directly. It's practical aspects of finite element sim simulation, and it's some uh, really good information. We're going to have a quick look at what it says about tetrahedrons. Okay, so in the book it talks about the 3D elements and this video and for the next little while we're just going to work with tetra meshes. So there's two types. One is a first degree called a linear or tetra 4 or shortened as a tet 4. You'll also hear as parabolic elements or tet tens and these are uh, the same as a linear, except there's another node in between each. So a total of 10 nodes on those. Well, which one do we want to use? Generally, what we want to use is the parabolic elements. It says linear tetra elements are not recommended for structural. Okay, do they have any purpose then? Well, it says in the same book, uh, although they're preferred, some engineers prefer to start with the linear meshing and then convert it to parabolic. So we're going to work on that as well, converting one to the other. Okay, so back to our Hyperworks, and here we are in our model, and we've imported a block, really. Okay, so what I want to do in here is let's go ahead and mesh it. We have chose it by surfaces. We could do it by solids. doesn't make a difference. We're going to leave it as first order. Element size is set to a half down here. And let's mesh it. Okay, so it does it down here. And you see we've got 1,461 nodes. Okay, let's reject that. If we go and choose second order and mesh it, going to take a little bit longer and now we got 9700 so from 14 to 9700 nodes same size of elements etc all right let's go back and just for fun we're going to go to first order and remesh it okay so there's our mesh now we're not going to do too much with this but one of the things that we can do before we add our, before we run with this and basically add all our boundary conditions, we want to check our elements. So 
under tool we have the check elements button now over here we have standard I'm going to go through these just real briefly but the biggest check here the most important I think is this tech collapse now right now we got this value set as 0.5 if you read and look up what other people say you can get by really with about 0.1 we're just going to leave it at this for now and we're going to come back to this in some other tutorials and we're going to look at other values how they're calculated and then we're going to look at how we fix them so if I hit tech collapse it's going to tell me that 25 failed this criteria now if I go over here this is kind of cool I can go under um, assign plot if I do that again now I get a color graph showing which elements fail That's, and you know basically what's the tech collapse of each of them all right, so I hit Tet Collapse. Now down here, 25 of them failed. Let's go have a look at them, and we're going to use this technique in the other tutorials as well. So I hit Save Failed, and that puts them in a buffer. The highlighted elements have been placed in the user mark. Okay, let's hit F5 for Mask. I want to mask those elements that failed. So I retrieve them. There they are. But really, I just want to show those and hide all the others. So hit Elements and Reverse. Now Mask. So there they are. Let's just turn off the geometry. And there's the elements that failed. Now we're going to work on some other tutorials on fixing them up. We're not going to do that right now. We're just going to have a quick look at one or two of them. So let's pick one here. Okay, so there's an element. Now it's not uh, it's not a perfect tetrahedron. It's not bad. Um, it's not quite as it's not a regular tetrahedron. But what we can do, even though we're looking on the one screen, let's hit return. We're back to this check elements page. If I click on that element pop up a window and tell me, you know, here's the tet collapse. It's actually pretty good. Now, unlike the 2D page, we can't just grab a corner and drag it. But we do have some other options that we can do that we'll cover a little bit later in another tutorial. All right, we can go under this tool and we have a translate option over here. And we're going to cover that later as well. One of the other things under, well, we're going to cover this, is this order change. Before we do that, let's go under Geometry, Temp Nodes. Let's create some Temp Nodes. I'm going to draw a window around this thing and go select them and add. Okay, so there's these temporary nodes it creates on all the nodes on this element. Again, that's a linear first order. Okay, so... Let's do this. Let's clear them and let's go back to uh, the 3D page and go order change. Over here, I can select all the elements. I can change it to first or second. We're going to change this one element here to a second order. And Presto Magic, now it's the second order. Okay, let's go back to Geometry, Temporary Nodes. We're just showing and looking around here. So let's create the nodes by window again. Draw my window. Okay, so now that we see we actually have 10 nodes on it. So we've changed it from a TET4 to a TET10. All right, let's hit Return now and we'll unmask all zoom out let's clear our temporary nodes okay so there's our tet mesh which is first order except for one element in here now i could go ahead and sign materials and properties and put our boundary conditions on etc so we're going to do that on another video we're going to pull up two or three other examples and we're going to go through and mesh them and we're going to look at improving the mesh and then we'll set up all the boundary conditions and talk about what happens when they don't run and we have elements that we
can't fix and how to fix them. So stay tuned. I'm going to try to do a few more here in the near, near future.